ho, ho, ho. Today, the seven people have been waiting for the stream. Guys, it's getting crowded here. I ruined my book. Like, look at shit. Paper I wrote the card magic. It's, it's just it fell fell apart. I worked the I worked it so hard. It, it, it fell apart, man. Hello, Mike Fanbag. Drop the beat. How is it possible seven people have been waiting and now there's only two watching? Are you freaking kidding me? Come on, everybody at the keys. Let me know if you are alive. What deck of cards you got on, on the table? What are you expecting from today's session? And what are you practicing right now? Glenn Andrews says hello from the United States of the motherfucking America. Glenn Anderson, hello, back from Berlin. The one and only capital of Germania. Okay, kiddos, let's hit it. Hit it. Let's hit it. Let's get started here. Let's get started. Mario's magic. Like and subscribe. Hey there, everybody. My name is Mario. So welcome back to another Cut Magic Live Practice Jam session here on my channel. It is a Tuesday night, as usual, 8 p.m. GMT plus two, uh, Berlin, respectively German summertime. And guys, the summer is back in Germany. The summer is back in Berlin. It, it, it temperatures are rising, are rising, and everybody's freaking out again. But I don't have a problem with a nice summer season, you know, because in Germany and in Berlin, the winter is usually very cold and very long. Although the uh, like last couple of years, uh, temperatures would be above, above uh, normal for the winter, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, sun is great. Summertime is great. We started today with a little um, swimming session in a uh, public open uh, bath. Very nice. So I'm I'm fresh for doing this with you guys today. What's up, everybody? Now you know. Um, Xavier Spades. He does uh, fix your trick. Odmeris magic. I do f uh, fix your book. Look at this. I guess start here by fixing my my paperback version. Of Roy Road Roy Road to Cap Magic. It's a Dova paperback version. If if you don't know this book, if you don't if you don't have a version of this book already, uh, check out the links in the info box. Get yourself a version of this uh, absolutely fantastic book. And also, I'm curious if uh, Richard Bellis is tuning in today because. Uh, um, we got a Discord server now, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit in a second after I fix my book here. <laughs> Um, look at this, look at this. Uh, now I fixed my book. See that? Check it out. How, what, do you say? what do you say? Isn't that, isn't that, uh, isn't that uh, a DIY self-made um, book repair here? Yeah. Send me your books. I'm going to fix them for you guys. Awesome. So, so, so. So, uh, welcome everybody. W what's up? Where's everybody? They, where, where is uh, where, where is Nyra Smith? Where is uh, uh, Flying Wee and Honey Badger? Because this guy went completely like a bananas in our brand new Discord server we got now on Marius Magic, which is absolutely fantastic. Let me show you this here in a second. That that's it. That's that's a Discord server. Um, you will find the link to the server in the community tab, pretty pretty much at the top somewhere, and. Um, there is Naira Smith and Fre 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 Frederick Barut is also in the house. Hey, Frederick, welcome to the show um, and thank you so much uh, for your um, pledge on, on Patreon. They're, they're amazing. Very, v w welcome to the community and welcome to tonight's show. Um, so I'm here, Discord server. Um, Right, now available on on, uh, on, on uh, eBay, on Mary's book binding. Glenn Andrews, you always got it, you know. Uh, 
keep diverse you know keep it keep the cash coming and uh, you know uh, di diverse economy or what's what's it called anyways doesn't matter so discord server here and um i want to use this as an intro for um what we're going to talk about today in the royal road to card magic because today we are going back to the overhand shuffle right we are in we are in um i don't know we are in what the hell i'm <laughs> It's gonna be a running gag, you know. I'm going. I'm doing this every time. So, so we've been. Um, this this book starters the first section with the um, overhand shuffle, and then we go to um, a riffle shuffle flourishes. Then we go to the glide, the glimpse, uh, the key card, the palm, the back slip, and then back again to the overhand shuffle. By the way, all the all the sessions in this series here, in this live series where we walk through the Royal Road to Card Magic, you will find in the info cards up there, right? Info cards as well as in the info box. If if you wanna uh, if you wanna um, uh, ch check out uh, what we did uh, on the other on the other uh, chapters, and also when you watch this uh, in the future. And this is not live anymore and i've done other streams already you know that that's it's still true i update that shit, okay uh anyways now who got in Bray, they say it at the beginning of the book to follow their lead to work this book chapter by chapter to get or to gain the most satisfying results from learning card magic with this sauce and now at this point here um it's page 116 we are going back to the overhand shuffle and i love this so very much i love this so very much and i will tell you exactly why i think this is a very very important chapter in this book that's the one thing i want to talk about and the other thing is the tricks in this chapter are all just very 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 good as a matter of fact oblivion aces is one of my favorite tricks favorite ace productions because you can play this for a big crowd you can play this um very uh, very very cool and casual you can um do this a little harder for yourself you can add a little more uh, card expertise in there but you can also perform this pretty much on a very um uh, um beginner level skill level it's a really nice trick and also the other tricks in there and there's also kind of a card production i i i, I kind of um overlooked uh, for all the time so I, i'm gonna give this card production here what is it called um it's called um where is it um leapfrog the leapfrog <laughs> card production um a try here just to just to give an example how it looks like even if a um card shop like myself a card um, a card master um uh, attempts a, a specific technique for the very first time because um naira smith and um um uh, describe it's honey right you describe on um uh, uh on discord right um i guess so so you guys you guys went completely um uh um block of bananas over different topics and the one thing that I wanted to point out is that you guys completely went um, um, uh, showed yourself very focused on um, something like the um, diagonal palm shift for example a, a specific technique like this and now this chapter in a row road to card magic this will give us a very very nice reality check now don't get me wrong it's a lot of fun and it's absolutely legitimate to um, nerd out to go look up bananas and crazy over specific techniques and slides but and it's a very big but there's a huge difference in um, being excited about a certain slide or really building a repertoire for yourself that works for yourself and especially building this repertoire of specific slides on a solid foundation of card handling skills and if you mix those things up you know you will jump from one slide to another slide to another slide and nothing will ever uh, get to any satisfying results because you will never really get the chance to gain experience in using these things properly and that is a really really big mistake a really really dangerous mom moment moment in the whole in the whole thing of uh, learning uh, card magic right 
but what is true and i believe honey said it in the in the discord chat you know um practicing skills is something different uh, than being talented and uh, the physical skill is also something uh, very different from um from what was it the thought from from knowledge um that you kind of possess immediately at the point where you understand it um because yeah so you got to practice the stuff and you got to really make this uh this to, to get the still skill to have to get it to, to to get it under your skin you know um so little introduction here i'm super excited about about today's session um and e e another thing um flying we these cards are freaking amazing i have been working with them all week long and they are freaking amazing um i love them i'm just having a great time with these playing cards so what we got here uh, and now we're, 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 Glenn Andrews will call uh, uh, it uh, literature restoration. Yeah, perfect condition. Yep, that's me. That's me. Okay, so with me here. And also, one more thing. We just made up our minds. Or um, I had... Here, where, where is this? Um, here. I, 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 I. I had a poll. I went for a poll here right here on top um, in the community tab of my channel asking um, how sh uh, shall we call the Admarius Magic community members and um, there were two options I was giving Admatrons and Admaniacs and yes, honestly um, uh, my my uh, uh, that was my suggestion Admatrons because my my, my thought process was uh, something like okay Admarius plus Patreon what, what comes out of there and that's Admatron Okay, Patro um, uh, Patreon or Admetrion or something like this. And um, this is, I'm, I know this is um, cutting edge creativity. Um, so you see, uh, so you see still what a group can do because that is just one man uh, suggestion. But the group, they came up with Maniacs in the Discord chat and... Um, uh, so I asked the, asked the folks, and you can see the results here. Um, with 18 f uh, votes, uh, at Maniacs, it's, you, uh, so now everybody kind of you know who wants to be called like that, who joins Patreon, or supports me on Patreon, who makes a pledge on Patreon, or who just you know shows up on a regular basis here with um, uh, productive and intelligent comments. Um, uh, w you, welcome to the show. You are now an officially an um, at, um, at Maniac. Nice, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, Andrew, uh, I have uh, the Theory Eleven Nomad. Okay, uh, that's that's uh, nerd. Okay. Now Greg Schachter come to, uh, comes in. Uh, and the last time we talked, he says try my name in German. So Schachter. Hello from Florida. I love Admarius magic and uh, teachings. Um, wow, Florida, that's nice. I want to go to Florida uh, uh, one day soon because it's uh, supposed to be very nice, right? Florida is nice, right? A lot of sun and uh, relaxed folks. Anyways, um, I'm trying to make this as short and uh, crisp as, uh, as possible. But as you can see, I'm already, you know, um, I'm already all over the place, losing my uh, my shit, you know. But that's who I am. That's, that's what's happening. Currently, we got um, 11 folks watching. So, Royal Road to Card Magic. Guys, Royal Road to Card Magic. Um, the Overhand Shuffle. I believe that the overhand shuffle is the most underestimated tool in card magic ever. Here's the thing about the overhand shuffle. What the hell? There is some, I, I hear myself in the background. Shut up. Okay, I, I, I fixed it. I fixed it. Um, the overhand shuffle. You can do everything with the overhand shuffle. I, I believe the overhand shuffle is the, is the only card handling technique you actually need to know to perform decent card magic. Um, everything and today we will learn why um, because the overhand shuffle enables you to position a card at any position in the deck to set up a stalk to force a card to control a card to control a whole stalk and it gives you variations of um, basic the same technique or the, uh, the same users so that you will play always safe so that you will not be um, redundant with uh, what you do so that nobody can trace it back and this is extremely powerful now I know that this is not um, a famous take yeah um, everybody wants to be the smartest kid in the room and as far as magic 
is attracting a lot of uh, teenagers and uh, boys and there's a very competitive environment um, it is all many times all about who knows the best slides who knows them uh, best who can perform them uh, the wildest the craziest and who knows most about a specific slide and its um, uh, evolvement or evolution over the time but when we aim at or when our objective is to become the best magician only we can become all of this doesn't matter so much and we need to make it as simple as possible for ourselves because out there in the open in real life performance situations we are going to be confronted with so many objectives we are dealing with so many shit um, you really want to have a very very defined repertoire at your hands that you have completely mastered that you have completely at your fingertips there is no no nothing left of attention you need to put into your hands for this and obviously the overhand shuffle is one of these techniques that gets us ready now don't get me wrong of course you can progress of course you can um walk further from there but first you have to you have to um to settle in here and i love this so very much about the royal road to card magic so we are already we already know we got we got a good start with the overhand shuffle and with the riffle shuffle we we got already a repertoire of very fine tricks we have been introduced to different concepts of card magic a key card principle by using the glimpse as a technique we we learned about the concept of holding out uh, basically objects respectively cards with the glide and also we learned about different um card presentations and also as a matter of fact we kind of have been introduced between the lines or by the selection of the tricks uh, to um different um um uh, designs or different premises of effects so we have quite an abstract range of what we can do with cards and at this point we are looking already at the double lift and double turnover a very important technique te technique and we're already looking at the past so we are looking at advanced sleight of hand here to improve our card magic but before we go there and you know that's the emotion we got now we want to go there who got them away they just they just bring us back they say no let's let's take a look uh, let's go back to the overhand shuffle here and they do this for a reason and they know exactly what they're doing and if you follow them along here if we follow them along here this shit is gonna get real because we are now we are now um cementing we are now putting cement do you say this we are now really building a solid foundation for a card magic and if we stick to it if we work this if we take the time to really work this properly we have a great future ahead at, as card magicians and that is exciting and i love it and i hope you trust me on this one and if you don't trust a good old marios you trust you want to trust who got and brue right so what's going on in the chat uh, hello from floria i love what marios mentioned today great job on the last name Hello to everyone, uh, Sebastian Hensi. Hello, Sebastian. Welcome to the show. I've been just here making very clear that this is a very important chapter in the Royal Road to Card Magic, Section 9, the Overhand Shuffle, Part 2. It's a very important chapter. It's maybe the most important chapter in this book for novices in the art form. And it is very often overlooked, especially by novices, okay? And especially in a time of age where um, we live, where everything's very trend-oriented, where uh, all of a sudden a certain slide becomes super popular because uh, uh, Chris Ramsey did a tutorial on it, or so, so, some other uh, really famous um, uh, guy with, with a huge reach uh, on social media. <laughs> but by the way, this, this is not new. This has been always been the case, by the way. Maybe just the reach and the, the, the um, speed is higher, but that has always been the case. Um, we will learn about this in uh, when we talk about the pass here in the um, Royal Road to Card Magic. It's the, I don't know, when is the pass coming? I believe that's two or three chapters after this one here, right? 
Um, by the way, I've got tutorial series on everything um, we're covering here up and running on my channel. You'll find this in the info cards um, linked, of course, uh, uh, all uh, everything relevant to, to this uh, chapter here. But if you want to prepare yourself for the next sessions, you will find everything on my channel, on my channel page, ordered in um, playlists. Um, uh, great job there. I, did a, I think I did a really great job. So I'm building this up uh, systematically so that you that it's the easiest for you to get what you need. And in the info cards here, you will find, of course, the playlist uh, called No Limits of Control, which covers the basics of card control, catching and holding a pinky break using an in jog, and of course, the overhand shuffle plays a, 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 a fundamental role in all of this. And we're going to look at the shit right now, guys. Hello, everybody. Uh, got me the book yesterday very right Sebastian Hensi so look at this you got a brand new book book my book is completely um, I just fixed it to get started here today right so um, 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 first things first we have the in jog and break right so let's uh, use a use a um, a red B club special here. So, an in jog and a break would look in a performance speed something like this. This is me um, catching a break using the overhand shuffle with an in jog. Now, gets me in an absolutely in an absolutely stable and powerful position. And don't you worry about this little gap here for the break in a live performance situation with laymen who don't know anything about car magic. You don't know anything about it. You can transfer the break by simply here, and I'm flashing it when I'm holding it like this, left and right hand, just very powerful. All right, look at this. I simply, I simply in jog the first card, shuffle the rest on top of there, and then I catch the break. That's the first thing, that's the first thing. And really, I'm talking here strictly from a performance perspective, from real life situations, okay? Because in real life, you don't do a flashy, a super visual effect after one another. You do this as a compilation for a YouTube video, like a music clip or something. But in real life situations, nobody gives a freak, for nobody, everybody's bored immediately. Because from a layman's perspective, um, one color change is just, just like, like another. From a layman's perspective, if the card rises from the center of the, ba of the deck to the top uh, one time and a second time and third time, it's always the same effect. It doesn't matter if you're using different techniques. Nobody cares. Nobody knows. So this is something that you need to get at your fingertips because this enables you to really perform magic, card magic, in front of, in front of a group of people. Because from here, you can go pretty much everywhere. Because of course, this is my top card. I can run how many cards you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. I in jock, I catch, catch the break. I hope I catch it, doesn't matter right now. And there I go. I got my position. Now I cut the cards with the double undercut. And I explained this in this tutorial very well. There's no stress about this at all when you perform it well. And you got your target card at a sixth position. This is just one example for the use case of this. Of course, you can immediately shuffle the cards off. So you lose a card in the deck. You have a spectator put the card in there. You injoke the first card, right? You catch a break and then you shuffle the cards off just like that and you've got the target card in one motion in one move you got the target card lost in the deck from a spectator's point of view and at the same time controlled to any desired position you want to have it right because of course we say you know what put your card in here no matter what it is you need you need it at four positions so you go one two three in jock you go you keep on shuffling of course you stay with with your audience there you shuffle it there there you go, you got it now, whatever it was. Fourth position of the, of the deck. Very, very powerful, very powerful. Of course, you need to have mastered the overhand shuttle first. You need to be able to switch from 
shuffling multiple cards to running single cards, right? You need to be able to alter between the tempi, you know, to make it a little groovy, but no problem, right? Because this is something you should have been practicing now. How many weeks are we are we doing this now? Since um, since since the first chapter, right? Since we got the over, since we talked about the overhand shuffle. Another thing, uh, Flying V and Honey were talking about in the Discord, in the Discord uh, chat. Um, how long does it take to um, to tackle a slide? Um, it takes a long time. It takes much longer than most people will admit. At a certain level, um, your attention will shift from learning one slide after another slide if you make the right choices. And um, you will spend more time in routining tricks. You will spend more time in actually putting your techniques to use. And there are some performers who, who completely specialize even on, on just one um, or, or, or one uh, specific technique um, with a couple of other techniques. Fair enough. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of work done with the Elmsley count, for example, and. Um, See, uh, uh, Elm's account is something that uh, you will not fool any magician with it, no matter how well you perform it. Everybody knows this because uh, uh, that's the Elmsley uh, count. That's how it looks like, right? And yet there are very well-known magicians who built ho basically their whole career or their, uh, really their, 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 their main body of work on the Elmsley count. Fair enough, right? It takes longer, so much longer. And that's why if you want to get to places, you need to make decisions. You, mean, you, mean, you also need to make tough decisions. And here's, wh here's where you, lose, where you lose, lose it completely. If you keep on jumping from one slide to another slide because you're just following twen trends and you never finish anything, you will go no nowhere. You will go freaking nowhere, right? So, um, how, so ask yourself, how, how, how many... Um, how many minutes a day, how many hours a week are you practicing the pass? Um, did you actually understand how to use it? Did you ever really try to use it? Did you ever really use it? Maybe you're, you, are, you are way better with the pass than you actually should, should be or, or need to be. And so why do you spend your time there instead of at least learning another slide or at least really focusing on how to use it? You know, you, you're getting me. It's really, really important. So if you re if you if you understand this, you will not freak out about the long periods of practice you need to go through to master certain techniques. And also in this behalf, um, we're talking about at least three months to uh, eight months. Are we talking to uh, twelve months to twenty-four months? In some cases, even longer. And now this is not famous and people say oh you you're a loser it takes you so long and this is all, this is all people that do not know what they are talking about and it's all people that are delusional about their own skills and there is a there is in magic take it 19 89% of people out there in magic are delusional about about their own skills um, so they think they have mastered a technique or they're really good at it uh, but they're actually not and really, I'm really, really, uh, I, I'm giving you no credits Credits here. I don't give a shit how well you performed it on camera because I know camera work. I know how it fucking works. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about going out there and making it work 99 times out of 100. I'm going out there to be being confident, self-aware, and absolutely focusing on your performance and on your audience and not being with your hands at all. That's what I call mastering a slide. And then something like the overhand shuffle, well, in my humble opinion, you should never be satisfied. As a matter of fact, I start every session, every practice session, whenever I take a deck of cards, I go through a five minute routine of all available false shuffles and controlling techniques, I know with the sucker. Every day. And sometimes I'm enjoying myself so much, I'm doing it 50 minutes or 25 minutes, right? 
Do not underestimate the overhand shuffle. It is the most powerful tool in card magic. And if you master this, you, you can go out and do your thing safely because you have the safety net and then give it a try. Make your first experiences with the pass or with something like the, um, some fancy color changes or some, uh, some angle sensitive palms like the Tenkai, which is a very sensitive palm, which is for the most scenarios not usable and everybody you know who says differently is performing only for a camera in his lifetime and not on a freaking friday night in front of a wild bunch of drunk people who are just about to conquer the freaking bar right because then you have people all over the place people why not grab your cards and stuff <laughs> so um Got me the hook, a book. Yes. Hi from Toronto. I'm following you, Roy Road to Card Magic. Got my book out on page six. Let's go, Walter Vivers. Yeah, bring me back here on the pages. Free Fire Zero says what? 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 Did I say something wrong? Okay. Um, back to the cards. Camera is off. Anyways, they say here in Roll Road to Card Magic that this is something uh, they uh, found. It, 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 it gives um, novices problems. This um, this catching the break here with the thumb when you when you get the cards, and th this gives novices problems. They say in Roll Road to Card Magic. So if this is the case for you, um, let me show you this very briefly. So when you jog the cards in, right? When you when you in jog the first card and then shuffle the rest on this, you're basically in this position, right? Let me show you how this how I roll here. So I really I just bent I, I keep now my thumb here on the back of the cards so that I get really like this pressure moment, right? You see that? And now when I catch here the the, the, the whole package on top at the outer short side, I let go with my thumb and in, immediately I get into this nice position. Bang. Right? So one more time. There you go. Uh, free Fire Zero, your Free Fire game download? What are you talking about? So, hey, Honey Badger Strange says, but on Marius, angle, 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 sensitive, dangerous stuff is the m m most fun. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure because, um, of course, if you got if you got the confidence if you get the confidence and if you got a repertoire to lean back on or to fall back into um uh, you can you can go out and you can be bold and crazy but uh i i'm just focusing here on the aspect of uh, really getting somewhere really becoming the magician only you can be the best magician only you can be right so And Oni Badger and Strange said, also clearly Nairo Smith and I dropped a lot of wisdom in that chat. <laughs> no, I'm just picking you up, guys, and I'm just uh, uh, trying to um, gently get getting you on the right track, you know? So, a little bit here of the, um, of this uh, beautiful, beautiful shuffle control, right? And you don't you worry here if from this angle seeing the break here at this point okay, I can hide this anytime that's no worries now let's go let's talk about the let's talk about the most bad badass move here in in the uh in in the, in the book I, I love this so much this is just a killer this is a killer it's it's the um lift uh, lift shuffle let's go here with the with the ace of spades right um Overhand lift shuffle. Now this thing enables you to force a card. It would look something like this. So at any point, a spectator stops me, right? And I've I've got the ace of spades here, right? And I easily, yeah, bring the ace back to the top. And then I do this again. You can stop me anytime, right there. And there we go, the ace, right? Do you realize how powerful this is? This thing enables you to force multiple cards. This thing enables you to um, control multiple cards to the top, so you can have, uh, so you can control 
a stock of cards and at the same motion, pretty much at the same momentum, control the stock back to the top. Right? So you have a you have the you have a card, you have a spectator pick that card, check it out, and you have another spectator put, put, putting the sucker back, right? So you shuffle this, you throw this on top, now you got the card, you do this again, you say stop, right? And you have your other spectator put your card in there. And you can walk the line with this, you can go, go through a circle, and then you can also at the same time position the cards where you want them in a the deck, right? That's that's unbelievable. Right here with the overhand shuffle. It is so powerful. It is a multiple force, a multiple stock control. Right there in the moment where you do this. With this baby, you can you can perform the, the most powerful cut magic known to known to man, to mankind. Okay? Have a revelation. Have a, a four card, a six card um not revelation, also revelation, but a prediction. A six card prediction plus production at impossible location. With that, with, ju with just this, 109 on the Royal Road to Card Magic. And here's the great thing about it. And that's the best thing about it. It is super innocent. It is the freaking overhand shuffle. And if you mastered it, you can play this super easy. It, for a layman, it just looks like the cards are generally, sh generally shuffled. I just want to stretch this so much. Because I want you to, to enjoy yourselves. I want you to have the, mo the, the most fun with card magic. Very, very cool. So, <laughs> because of God and Broeda right here, um, a few minutes practice will enable you to make this lift the special packet smoothly and Im the lift of the uh, special packet smoothly and imperceptibly. Yeah, that's what who got in Brewery right to do over this technique. A few minutes practice will enable you to make this the, the, this lift of the special packet smoothly and imperceptibly. And I wrote as a notation here, what? Who wrote this book? Some YouTube kids? <laughs> Honestly, guys, few minutes. That's um, that's uh, that's a little bit uh, uh, of a understatement here. Yeah, it will take a little bit longer, but it will definitely not take you um, six months, and it shouldn't. But to really, really nail the sucker, to really become absolutely absolutely confident that, that that you can do it um you will have to invest more time than three months or half a year or so you have to constantly do this this is not something like i learned this once and then whenever i want to do this is like you no you got to do this every f single freaking day it's a powerful tool a powerful weapon right so I have an in-depth tutorial up and running on this thing. You will find this in the info cards. There, uh, in the info cards. Beep, beep, beep. There, up there, up there. Check out the info cards. Check out the info cards. And also, I'm in an on-off rela relationship right now with uh, Tobacco. I just broke up with Tobacco again, so I'm all over my nuts. <laughs> you know? Because I, uh, I want to smoke, I want to smoke, but I have to eat the nuts instead. So, um, I will show you the slide right now, um, very shortly. Because uh, Glenn Andrew says, them I have a hard time following from an audience view. Any chance you can do this over the shoulder? I can do this over the shoulder, but I will give you um, a show. Honest, uh, on, at Honey, it's uh, two evenings of chatting, and it seems we got our own format here. Yeah, well, you engage. I, I always said, guys, if you want to, if you engage, I, I, I get to know you closely. I can, you know, I can cut it down more to your profiles, right? Mm. Uh, leave smiles is now. Leave smiles. Hey man, what's up? 
Right, it's an amazing slide. I use it all the time uh, to retain a few cards at the start of the uh, of the trick. Yeah, very nice. No info cards. Why are there no info cards? That's bullshit. They are. They're supposed to be info cards. I have info cards here. You have to go over the video, man. Over the video, and then uh, with your finger or with your with the mouse, and then I come. There, there it comes. So, um, so let me just uh, just give, give me a little brief um, outlook here. So. The proper grip of the overhand shuffle, of course, is key. So the cards are mainly clipped between thumb and um, middle finger, right? Um, the index rests pretty loosely on, on top of the, of the long side. Now the deck is held about um, 45 degrees angle, um, hori uh, f f di diagonal to the, uh, to the floor, right? And the pinky and the um, uh, uh, ring finger support this grip, right? This is where we go. Now, in this grip here, uh, I have the the ring finger, however, kind of operational. So if I if I break off a package from the top and I come down again, look what's happening. Yeah, I I, I have. Oh, wait, let me. Wait a second. So I'm back. I'm sorry. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, with the with an uh, Omni deck, right? So we're breaking off a package. We start shuffling. Now when I come down, you see this? I kind of push the package here in this position, and I pick it up with my th ring finger. It's clipped between ring finger and um, thumb. Now you have to make this work a little bit for your in your own hands. But this is basically how the action goes. You shuffle down. Bang! You go. There you go. Now you got it, right? And now, you, now you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can have it. You can drop it anytime. You can shuffle to a certain point. You can even pick up a, a few par cards, whatever. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the chat right now. Uh, Richard Bell is in the house. Hey, Richard, welcome. Um, and Ulf Knöter. Turned, turned, uh, tuned in. Welcome, guys. Welcome. I'm just explaining here the lift um, shuffle. And obviously now, when you got the card and somebody says stop, you throw the package on top of there. It's a little bit, just a little bit of timing. You got to practice, and then you make this, uh, you make this sucker work. It is super powerful um, force, right? And in the same way, now you have, a, you have a spectator. So you say you shuffle a couple of, you run a couple of cards. So you have a small number of cards in your right hand. You have a spectator, put a card in there. Spectator puts the card in there and then you pick it up and it looks like you're, you're shuffling over there. Drop it at any point. This is what I like to do. And then I do this beautiful thing here. Bang, 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 bang. And I have I have everything where I want, it, where I want to have it to be. All inclusive, you know, <laughs> all inclusive. That is, that is, you can do everything, everything with this. And once again, I'm talking here about um, a real-life performance situation with an uh, with an um, close-up um, situation where you're interacting with 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 the people. So the basic rule it all boils down to is work with what is easiest. Aim for easy, baby. But make the make the max out of max it out easy but highly efficient easy but highly useful that's the basic rule choose this always and build it up from there okay and then there is going to be this turning point where your hands will kind of start making decisions for yourselves or where the practice becomes really creative and you know figuring out wait wait a second and then you 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 start to kind of you know really discover um the the absolute tiny subtleties you know this absolutely this is what it what, it, what, what makes it perfect you know in 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 the in the sense of completely undetectable um creating an absolutely irresistible illusion and the beautiful thing about the overhand shuffle, and I just repeat myself here because you need to understand this, and it's 
really so hard to understand because everybody's looking at the pass and and the tenkai palm and the and the um 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 diagonal palm shift or whatever or a second and bottom deal and so on and so on this you will not you will not surpass this this is where you have to go through and this will always be with you always and if you make the experience of how much subtleties you can explore in your hands you can find in your hands with those cards then going into something like the pass going some in some to, something like the, the double lift or double turnovers or the diagonal diagonal palm shift it's a different talk it has a really different feel to it and you are going to be much more aware about what is going on and your time will be spent more productive so am i dropping or pulling into my left hand <clears throat> Very concrete question. Um, of course, um, the right hand, the right hand is doing all the work with the overhand shuffle. That that's that that's that means it's just the right hand, and it also the right hand decides um, the pressure, which is p p pressed against the thumb, and then the position of the thumb decides whether you are shuffling single multi right, whether you're running single cards or you're shuffling multiple cards. Right, that's the thing. That's the overhand shuffle. You have to have mastered this, and now you just adapt this in there. So when you when you have a drop at the point where you go down, you just let it go. Right. So you pick it up, you shuffle, and at a random random position, you let it go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let it go. Throw back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let it go. Throw back. There. Akuma Snow is in the house. Akuma, how are you doing, man? So, 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 so. Now. Yeah, so I already talked about this. Um, right, so let's read here a little bit. He says, um, the, uh, the action is so natural that many of the best card men use this force in preference to any other, um, like Odmerios. <laughs> Um, it should not be necessary to uh, reiterate that you must not look at the cards while shuffling, right? This is not th this is not something where you go like, eh, yeah, 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 no, no. This is something where you are completely like with the people with the audience. You say stop anytime, stop right there. Well, well pick up your pick up your card. There's your card. What, what card is it? Seven of seven of spades. Now the seven of spades. That's a nice choice. I love the seven of spades because um, the seven of spades. Whenever you say stop, whenever you say stop right there, I guess I've got another seven of spades there, right? Oh yeah. So, um, and now, here's, here um, we are um, now spread and break. And uh, this I've got covered in my tutorial series, No Limits of Control. I will just go briefly through this here, though. And um, here it says, a modern and inartistic way of controlling a card is basically to have a spectator pick a card anywhere, and then a the spectator, and then you look at the card, and then the performer would just close the deck back again. Something like this. And of now, who got in pro do um, recommend to um, to do this a little more uh, uh, gentle, to do this a little more um, um, flourishy, which is an expectation here at this point. So we have a spread here. We're spreading the cards. We have a spectator um, select any card. And by the way, I love the classic spread. This is just um, when I first saw it. I was so intrigued. I was like, how did, do they do this? This is amazing. This looks amazing. Right? No no card, card man, no cardistry kid would freak out over this. You know, for laymen, if you show cards to laymen like this, they are freaking out. They love it. So I'm always doing this. Playing this very straight. So pick a card, any card. Right? It really doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, sh uh, shall I take it? No, you don't take it. Are you crazy? These are my cards. Whatever, you know. This is this intimate moment. So you have a spectator point out the card now we are with the seven of clubs and then here's the, here's the move at this point at a spectator the card is lost right all i'm doing is i'm squaring up the cards and we're done we're good and i st 
stick with my spectator. I'm right there with my spectator as I do whatever I do with the cards, right? I hope I didn't lose it now, but I'm giving it a try anyway. So um, the seven of, no, that's the five of clubs. See, see I'm a magician. I turned the, uh, the five into the seven. I uh, lost it now. Now, this is a shame. I don't know where I lo lo lose, lost it. Let's do this one more time, right? Spectator stops me at any point. Ten of clubs this time, right? I catch the break. I stay with my spectator, and I cut the cards. I can do uh, use the the, the uh, uh, double undercut, or I use a simple triple table cut here in this case. If there is a table, only thing that is important at the moment where you catch the break, you do not. Here it is, by the way. Of course, um, you do not. You do not care about the card anymore. Seven of clubs. Here at this point, it is from the mindset of spectator, it's lost in the deck. So it should be lost for you too. So you don't worry about the cards anymore. It's just, it's just lost. And now when you cut, you have all the time in the world, just like I'm doing right now. I'm actually holding the, the cards while I do, uh, control the cut to the top using the double undercut. I hold it hold like this. Because, and I just pay no attention to it because from a spectator's um, point of view, this means that um, I'm just subconsciously kind of uh, uh, cutting the cards, which means that the selection, the um, f was it the four? No, it wasn't the four. It was the <laughs> seven of seven of clubs. So this is really a bad angle for for this uh, for this color change, right? I was I was actually performing it. I was performing it uh, to this camera to this camera, right? La 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 la. <laughs> angle sensitive stuff. Davi Davi Duff. Very, very powerful, very beautiful. And of course, and of course, um, you now can um, use this technique to go into the overhand shuffle. So we have a card uh, selected, a uh, seven of space. Now I don't use this uh, variation, not, uh, not so very often. I don't even really know how they explain it. It's here on page 100. Um, 22 so we are in this position holding a break and we basically need to need to, need to go to this position right 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 and from there we of course shuffle then shuffle off the top portion to the break and now i lost everything <laughs> so this is something i found kind of um in my hands or for me i found it i found it kind of awkward to 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 uh, to um to, to change the cards like this to turn them around like this, right? And also, I haven't really, I, I didn't really, so I, I guess you would go like this and then you would go around like this. And I didn't really, I have a problem here. I'm ca Sometimes I'm really not catching the, uh, the lower portion right because through this rotation motion and then everything falls to bits and pieces. So I'm usually using, um, using when I'm in this position, um, the double undercut, you know, um, very casually works very well. And when I got it on top, then I feel um, f f feel it much better to give it one more shuffle if, if, if I feel like it's, it's, it's necessary. And however, card control like this, I'm always doing this in this um, subconscious, in the seemingly subconscious state of mind where I'm just, you know, chatting with the cards and I'm just a nerd. I'm, I'm just always having the cards at my hands and doing something with it. Uh, but very subtle, very, very subtle. And there's no focus on the cards whatsoever in this, in, at this um, uh, moment. Once again, at this point here, when we catch the break, at a, from a spectator's point of view, it, it's done. The card is lost in the deck, right? The card is lost in the freaking deck. You have all the time in the world. Don't stress out. All right? So maybe you transfer it like this, and then you shuffle it off while you explain something or use the double undercut or any other cut you like to do, you like to use. By the way, of course, and also I covered this in this tutorial series, you can, um, King of Diamonds here on top, you can use the um, classic fan. You have a spectator put the card in there themselves to the nature of this grip here. They can push it all the way through 
And then when they come, reach this point where they can go further, you retreat the pack and you close the pack. You catch a break and you're done, right? So I got it. Well, we got King of uh, King of Diamonds, right? So we have the King of Diamonds on top of the deck. And of course, we it's not the King of Diamonds, but, um, but it's the King of Magic because um, as you can see, the King of Magic does some magic. And I all hear my thumb. I need to relax my thumb at this point. Doesn't really matter. And if I'm in this position, um, I'm just very smoothly taking the kin and I'm placing it right there in the center of the pack. I rotate the cards and look at this. We already performed a little bit of magic, right? So this is, you can use this, uh, you can use the, um, the thumb fan, the classic thumb fan. You can use, of course, the Charlie card, right? So we cut the cards right there with the Charlie card and now I lost it, I lost it, I lost it. Now I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I haven't done it with Charlie Kid for a long time, so this w w this is how how it would look like. You cut it, and now at this point you can decide maybe maybe I go for an um for an undercut here because now I um I uh, control it to the bottom of the deck, right? Which card was it? Let's do this one more time. I don't even know what card it was. Seven of Diamonds. Seven of Diamonds, so we go for the Charlie card, and I cut the card right there in the Seven of Di in in the, in the, in the card. Now I got it. Um, I, now I got it on uh, on top. Sadly, it doesn't matter. I just give it one a uh, little shuffle here and another another shuffle with the Seven of Diamonds, right? And let's see if I can bring the sh Seven of Diamonds on top of the deck with this shuffle. It should be here on top right now. N what is it? The nine of the nine of hearts. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yes, it wasn't the nine of hearts. It was the nine of diamonds, right? The nine of diamonds. Something like this. So you see here. I'm not using a pass. I don't use a, 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 a diagonal palm shift or some other um, really uh, difficult uh, uh, sleight of hand control. Something that you that that will take that will break your fingers. Literally, right? Uh, no. Overhand shuffle or something like the Charlie card, right? Which is for spectators absolutely beautiful. They lo love to see it. And if you say like, come on, we lose your card here. And, and with this cut here, we cut it in there. Uh, just right there, there it's gone. Lost in the deck, right? They love it. They just love it. So now we are going to look at this thing here. This thing, it's called the leapfrog, the leapfrog. And by the way, I'm thinking that um, Hugat and Bruy are consciously um, uh, uh, teaching us or showing us different methods of actually teaching a trick or approaching the a design of a trick. Because for now, uh, for the most of it, it was always like um, a, a very short synopsis of the effect, maybe even not. And then it was like a step-by-step -step walking through the routine. Now, we are at the point, we, we got something like this. Here we have rather striking discovery, a selected card leaps into view over the backs of the others. Uh, following the usual routine, a card is freely selected, noted, returned to the pack, uh, to the pack and controlled to the top. Right? That, that's following the usual routine. A card is freely selected, noted, returned to the pack and controlled to the top. So we are like already, like, we, we are already like professionals here. It's not walking you through a pattern, walking, walking you through uh, through it step by step. No, we are now we are now knights of of the cards. We now we are now um, having to um, walk our, ourselves, make up our own bullshit or whatever uh, through this uh, usual routine, right? <laughs> Shuffle the card to the bottom and retain it in that position. Key undercut about one third of the pack and place the pack it on top so that about one third of its length protrudes outwards being careful not to expose the bottom card in making the cut where does wrong with the music let's get back to the music i want to hear some music i don't know why there's no music have i done something wrong something's really really wrong okay here we go back to the music is everybody still with me? How, I, I don't even know how many uh, people are watching. I don't, didn't look at your uh, at your chat. I'm completely try. I'm running here my thoughts. Why we got a kind of record? 19 current viewers. My name is of Marius, and this is just what I do, guys. If you first tuning in for the first time, if you're shy, if you don't if you don't feel like uh, uh, hitting the keys on the chat, no worries, all right? 
Only thing that matters is that you got a deck of cards out and that you are practicing while you're listening to what I'm saying or while you're looking at what I'm doing. Because you want to make this quality time, quality time for yourselves, right? Time is precious. So, Leapfrog. In the middle of this, we say we have we have to control a card to the bottom of the deck. Then we undercut it and we have it out a little bit, like this thing. Be careful not to flash the bottom card, they say. And now, they tell me in the book that I'm supposed to bend the, the, um, the bottom card here. I pick it up with my index finger, which I even can do. And then I bend it up and then I let it go. And then, and then all the other cards are supposed to fall off like this. Boom. And there is the revelation. However, it's supposed to keep the card at the bottom in your hand. So this is the leapfrog. I've never tried this before. This is what Mario is trying to leapfrog. <laughs> yeah, what a sick slide. What a sick slide. One more time. Undercut. Bang. Here we are. Let me give this a try. I don't know how to pick up right now. This is the problem I have. I don't. I don't get it here at the edges. My 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 finger would. And when I try to bend it, it starts to gliding inwards again. These are the the problems occurring here. So how do I fix those? Like this. Yeah. Okay. Th that's how it's supposed to be. I guess. Now I made the move for the first time happen. So I want to end like this with this. It's very nice. That's nice. That's a nice production. Did, did you guys know ab about this production? Let's do this with the ace. Let's do this super signal with the ace. The leapfrog. So, bang. So, bang. And then, how do I, how the fuck do I get this sucker here, right there? How do I get this? What the fuck? Yeah, so this is the problem now. You see? And I just want to give you this as, a, as an example. When you first try a, a, a try a move, like it's everything is involved here. It's like how how high do I keep the cards? Pr I should I'm supposed to keep them really high, right? So that I can really get get this. I need this eagle grip here with the with the index finger. The index finger needs to really be able to grab those cards. And also then because of the length length, the limitation of my index finger. Now I got, I got the right length. Now I'm able to do this here. This is the sucker. Now I bend it downwards. And now I, I guess I should just let him go. Bang. Bang. What happens at the back of the cards is that the index buckles inwards to stay in this position. As you can see, I also overbend the, the ace <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's practice. But we're not practicing. We collect a rarity stack here anyways, aren't we? <laughs> and by the way, in case you ever bend your cards, you just can bend them back with the, with the, with the, with the um, ruffle. Right? One more time. The ace. So I cut the card. I bring it in the right position. And then I pick, pick up the ace. And then bang! I didn't I didn't manage to get it here because it really needs to end like this looks looks like this then it's cool it's a cool move I like this move what do you th what do you guys think about this move I like this I'm gonna practice this a little bit longer here it's a nice move maybe you can com 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 combine this with something you know when you say uh, you have um, kind of a stock yeah, with the four aces, you know, that's also very nice. So you you just would when you cut like this, you cut like this, and then you have um, or a whole suit, you know, you can present a whole suit with the ace on top, bang, and then it's supposed to be like this, and then you have a whole suit there, all the all the hearts or something, the ace of hearts. Nice, nice. Now once, now once you uh, you tackle the move. And you, it gives you ideas. No, of course it's time to to um, get this at your fingertips. So you 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 would um, really practice the the key notes. And the key notes by key notes I mean just the ma most important elements. So for me it is the the grip here, 
pretty much at the center, clip between thumb and index finger. Then, then it is the, this angle of the index finger, what, what I need to get hold of the bottom card. And then it's this pulling downwards and flipping it over motion. Next thing is catching the card because I didn't catch it here. And then it's just focusing on the keynotes until this move starts working in your hands. And then uh, uh, you know, you will have this 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 backdrafts or where you think you just I I just was thinking I got it already. I'm so good. <laughs> that's that's just that's just master mastermind of Marius. Just tries to move four times and then he got it. And then I and then I completely lost it here again. And then I became now I become impatient. And I'm doing I'm I'm not following the keynotes. Right? No no I gotta follow the keynotes. And then I build it up. So I'm not get, I'm not getting here the card. Ah, oh, come on. No, I got two aces. Oh, look at that sucker. Ah, now I have an idea. Now I have an idea. Why only produce? Why 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 one card? Why not? Why not? Why not four aces? Right? And then we name it the odd. We 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 we, we, it, we, we call it the odd. odd Ot my leap, ot leap frog, ot leap mock. <laughs> Probably some, somebody else did it before. I don't care. I don't care. Camera is overheating. Come on, I give it one try here with four cards, and then we we go to the next thing. So now th now I have the problem. So I swing cut this here, and now I need to catch four cards. So and I would just like go like this. Can I do this? Get can I get four cards? Nah, no, I don't get four cards. Can I control to catch four cards? This is the question. Can I control this? This would be the challenge. Can I control this? Yes, I would, when I transfer it, I would do it like this. Dang, and, I, and now I bend it. Bang, and then the cards really fall, and then I got the four aces. But this brings so much tension here with four cards. This just almost shot all the other cards um, over the table. All right, guys, I got to turn the camera off so that it is not overheating. One second here, one second, and then we're good to go. Yes, it's getting... A deckhead is in the house and says a bit late, but I love the series. A bit late for your life, a bit late in the, in the evening, a, a, a bit late. Or, or what? And um, Glenn Andrew says, getting hot in Berlin. Yes, we're temper temperatures rising. Temperatures are rising and there's nothing we can do about it. But it's okay, you know. I like the summer. Okay. We are doing this now for one hour and five minutes. Let me show you just favorite my favorite trick in this in this whole thing. It is just amazing. Showed up a bit late, Dag. No problem, no problem. This is just, this is just so amazing. I love this so much. One, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I hope I can make this work here. I haven't performed this for a long time, but this is this is beautiful, beautiful trick. It is called the Oblegian Aces, and um. This is one of my favorite tricks because this can be done very simple. So you follow basically the the, the, um, the core design. Or can you pimp? You can pimp the right a little bit in between uh, and um, add some nice uh, cuts or shuffles in between, and to make it to make it a little more impressive. But there's no need for playing it fancy. Great thing about it 
is you can in evolve involve you can in involve um, uh, four spectators and you can play this big and as a matter of fact I um, like to perform this in a table mm, a larger table dinner situation so you have people um, at the far end of the table to right side left side and by that you get the whole table engaged and it's a really nice card trick because um, it just um, it just plays tricks on on, on, uh, on the spectator's mind, which is supposed to do. Stott Clark, as is that the Royal Roads by uh, uh, John Hugard and Frederick Bruy, as I'm starting to learn card magic. First of all, Scott Clark, very welcome to my channel. Very welcome uh, uh, to our walkthrough live card magic jam sessions and yes it is the royal road to card magic by jean hugat and frederick bruret uh, it's just like taped here because i've been working this box so hard lately um um because i have um like um uh, students students like um the decad and um Nio smith and flying we they just don't want to listen and they just want to skip the important lessons and go straight to the pass or more advanced sleight of hand and so i just have to hit them with this book all the time and that's why it looks like that <laughs> yes yes i believe in um martial arts training techniques basically uh the novices should uh shut the fuck up and listen to what the master says and if they don't ob ob uh, obedient if they don't show obedience and awe they um they will not get any rice in the evening and they have to train their skills all through night and it doesn't matter if it's snowing or raining or if there was wild animals because that is how you learn kung fu yeah i know what i'm doing <laughs> um uh, scott clark if you want to support me a little bit there are links in the uh info box there is a um affiliated links uh, for um, U UK, US, and Germany. So just click that link and you'll f you will find the paperback version of Dover. Don't go for a cheaper one because this is a public domain, okay? That means the text is public domain. Everyone can paint, print this. And there are people who print this and um, they, they will send you a, a shitty copy, right? So this is the paperback d b version by Dover, um, which is it's, it's very well print and it's something you can work with. It's 12 or 14 bucks, depending on on what on, on the computer you're using. If you tr if you buy it on Amazon, <laughs> Mac users usually pay 20% more. I don't know if this is true. I'm just I'm just uh, spreading the, the rumors at this point. <laughs> Dick says, hey, it's not me. I've been working on chapter one for five months now. Very nice. So your professor Snape, Snape now. Yeah. Because here's how, here's how it is, right? You will, at one point, you will have to make a decision on which school you are. Are you gonna, are you gonna be Madvocats? Or are you gonna be at Maniacs, right? Because there's going to be rumble on the streets. Which kafu is stronger? <laughs> uh, uh. And then it's going to be half with the tenkai palms versus uh, full metal over and shuffle. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I said this live. I just try to do a super chat and you should see your two free ones. Well. I didn't I didn't receive any super chat yet here today. Oh. <laughs> Akuma, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. That's amazing. Uh very nice. So, um Ob 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 oblivion aces, right? Let me sh let me sh you know, camera is we on again. Okay. So Akuma, I, I I'm going to cut these cards one time, right, right there, and now Akuma, because you just hit the super set, super chat. Now you, that's a special engagement offering here. I need you to type in a number in the chat, um, 
bigger than 10 and uh, smaller than 20 because we don't have all, all we don't have all the time in the world we make this very precise here okay and i'm going to show you what's going to happen between 10 and 20 lower than 20 higher than 10 something nice okay so we're waiting for akuma in the chat what's the number akuma hi all uh, at my at advocate as the, the avatar will bridge a uh, bridge between both worlds ah yeah but um but i can't do this but th because um already um uh, um, um uh, 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 daniel madison already already got this one um i know this because i'm on discord right now and um i got um medvocats um discussing uh on my discord and that's why i know it but we are at many X, right? At many X. Okay, Akuma Snow wrote 12. 12. Now, here's how we roll. We draft. I'm going to deal down 12 cards on the table. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, you know what is the... What, what is the... Um, how... I don't know how is this called in English. Um, Quersumme. Check sum, sum of digits, you know, the 12, the sum of digits, it is uh, one plus two, right? It's three. Okay, so we just take the third card here in the pack. One, two, and that is the card of Akuma Snow, right? Now, who's next? Who wants to do this next? Now I've g I've I've give those cards one nice cut just like that, okay? One cut. Here are the cards. This is Akuma Snow's card. We're gonna look at it. Um, honey, you right now. Uh, um, you 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 you. Honey, I need a honey, honey badger. I want you now to honey to type a number. Just the same thing between ten and twenty, bigger than ten and smaller than twenty. Something nice. Go ahead. And I don't touch the cards here, by the way. I'm not doing anything with the cards, yeah? Come on, honey. We don't have all the, we, we don't have all the time. I'm not touching the cards. Seriously, I'm not touching the cards. And why is there no music in the background? You need to listen to better music here in the background. I'm not touching the cards. Come on. Come on. Beady, 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 bee. Honey, I need a number now. Come on, play with me. This is interactive magic on YouTube. It is super thrilling and super thriving. And everybody's so crazy excited about the interactive magic. 19, are you crazy? Okay, it's because it didn't, this even shocked the, the music, uh, the record label. Now music is off. Whoa, I hear more music. 19, okay, I'm back. We got the music, 19. So let's do the same thing here. 19. Check it out. This is still Akuma's card. And didn't touch it, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm such an idiot. What is wrong with my brain? So, 19 cards. Is this right? Are these 19? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19, right. So what is the, the sum of digits? 19, 9 plus 1 is 10, right? So, so check this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's your car. Honey. All right. Here we are. Now, I give those cards one more cut, just like this. Really clean cut. And one more table cut, just like this. Okay, who's next? Um, who wants to join the party? Anybody who t who is first, who's f uh, fastest, uh, fastest with the cards. But not Akuma and not Honey, because you already got your cards. Now I need somebody else. Again, between 10 and 20, because we don't have all the time in the world. Make it bigger than 10 and less than 20. That is the score here. Hit me with the number now. Deckhead goes for the 11, very nice. So we got 11, right? 
So we go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ele uh, eleven. And then uh, our uh, digit uh, is uh, two, right? One plus one is two. So we go one and two, and there we go. And now, and this is how I play it. I completely, I completely have now chance play it for us. What I'm gonna do is I engage another spectator and I'm shuffling the cards and I have the spectator stop me at any point. I'm shuffling the cards and at any point the spectator sh stops me. And the card he stopped me at is going to define the card that is my card, the magic card. Now on top here is a nine, right? Completely random choice. Now I go nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I have the nine card here, and that card decides the magic number, so to say, the magic, magic, magical volume. So that's the card I pulled out of this deck. This is the Ace of Diamonds, honey, and Akuma, and Deckhead. Would you please turn your cards around? One by one, because we got the four aces on the freaking table. Woohoo! <laughs> that is a freaking amazing card trick. Is it? Isn't it? I just, I've been so excited again. I just spit on the cards. So now, here's the premise of this. We have it. We're working with a shuffle deck of cards. Yes. We have then cut shuffle then cut. And then we have three spectators freely pick a number between 10 and 20. Make it bigger than 10 and less than 20. This is a free choice. And then we explain that the magic ritual is the following: that we have to take the what's it called, the digit, the quasima, um, um, the um, the checksum. I usually like to say it's like because magic has rituals, you know. I'm, I like to talk about rituals and magic, and this is the ritual here. We use the uh, the, uh, the quasim, and and always try like to drop that nine is the king, the queen of the numbers. Nine is the magical number um, because it's uh, three times three times three is nine and 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 everything everything leads to the nine at the end of the day um like nine nine cats have nine lives have, haven't you heard about that before it's not a, that's not just a saying it is true do not walk under a ladder and uh magic is real and a magic rituals <laughs> and um and that is this check sum right that draws out the card on the basis of a random number and at the end, a spectator chooses the card again. And it is the nine, the king of diamonds. And it's the card that defines the position from there. In a shuffle deck. Boom. Now, when you play this big in a big table, I have, I'm as, uh, now I have this beautiful setup. I have my ace. And I say, now this is, the thing about it is that this card now defines the, the meaning of the whole situation that I'm holding here as a magician, which I, by help of my assistant here, draw by chance out of the stack. Um, it might in one or another way correspond, correspond with your cards you're holding, and I show my ace. And this is the point where, where three people at the table are completely freaking out. And I, <laughs> I really had um, a woman once screaming at me and screaming at the audience also. What did she scream? But, I, but he could not know which numbers we are choosing. <laughs> like she was really angry. She was like, that was her reaction to the people and to me. But he could not know which numbers we are choosing. <laughs> That's how powerful it is. It, it's really a beautiful trick. Really, really, really. One of the one of the, my favorite tricks in the Royal Road to Card Magic. Love that. Love. I love that trick so much. 
Now, let's take very briefly a look in the book again. Because, of course, we have a stock, we have a setup here. And I will not go into the method here how do you set us up because you have the book or you get the book with a link in the info box and you can read it yourself. Now you know how powerful it is if you don't know the trick yet. And trust me, um, performing this is very powerful. And here's the funky thing about it. So first of all, we have the four aces. Where are the aces? At the bottom here. So my premise here is I need, um, I need four aces and I put them on top of the deck. I take a nine, any nine, but it's a nine. I take it on top of the deck and then I bring eight cards on top of there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight random cards. They, it doesn't matter. They are completely arbitrary. We got a nine. This is important. We got one ace, two ace, three ace, four aces. Now, you can have it set up like this. Or you set it up with, with what we've learned in this chapter. And this is so great. At the beginning here of this, uh, of, of it's page 125, we, we are getting a, um, a setup routine here. How do we set this up? Get an explanation of this. And this is just like a prerequisite for this trick. But of course, you just can pull it out of the box, set up like this, and then you give it a false shuffle and you're ready to go. Again. I love it about Roy, Roy, Roy Road to Card Magic. I love it about Hugat and Brouet because they do here again introduce us to the technique or to the um, aspect of stalking, setting up a trick or routine right in, in, in front of them, hiding in plain sight, using only the overhand shuffle. Very nice. And of course, this is just one example. This is just one very fine example for a whole uh, concept of the art form. This is how you do it, baby. This is how you roll. This is how you work a table, a group of people at a table. This is how you work a bar and a restaurant. Right there, page 125. This is not just a trick. This is a whole premise. This is a whole um, goal. Uh, this is this is the objective. I love it very much. So, when you got your setup, when you got your stock, depending on your skills, it really doesn't matter. You just give it one nice false shuffle. That's all you do. And maybe a very nice false table cut, just like that. Bang, that's all you do. It's done. Cards are here. Cards are shuffled, right? Shuffled deck of cards. Now you start your story. Sorry, you talk about uh, ma the magic ritual, the magic number, the nine as the. That's how I do it. The nine as the um, king or queen of numbers. <clears throat> and you can talk about. Um, uh, these digit numbers, this uh, check sums, they also play a very numer numerology, how is it called? Numerology, you know, mystical world, of, the mystical world of numbers, whatever it is you take on it, you can go like this. And now you have three spectators, ask, ask them for numbers. And and there is, you know, the, the cards are cut. Now, first number, we've, we, 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 now, we now go always for elf, uh, for 11. I'm s for 11, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the checksum is 2, so we go 1. You put this on a table. We give this one to the spectator, the first ace. They should keep hide it. Now we take this package, we place it on, on the rest of the other cards and place everything on top. And now this is basically already mixed and stuff. You don't need to do anything. You now can just proceed with with the same pattern, with the same self-working mechanism here in play. What I like to do is say, look, I just give those cards one fine cut, right? Bang. These cuts I'm using 
check out the info cards the um, three boldest false cuts in gambling and conjuring it's a very old playlist of mine doesn't matter and also within this new tutorial series coming up on my channel right now um, fast paced tutorials highlighting the keynotes on the move keynotes on the move fast paced tutorial series these cuts are covered very soon because next week guess what and guess why who got them brewer they keep us with a shuffling we go false shuffles and cuts that's what we do next week that's what we do next week and we do it reasonably we, we now understand why this is so important isn't that cool isn't that great so back here i stay with 11 another spectator one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven right and this is just a routine now this is self-working one on the table because it's two you know question second is goes down it's the ace put those left in your hand on the table pick those up place them on top you do this one third time any kind maybe a little um false shuffle we just learned with the um undercut throwing back again 11 just to keep it short one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven very nice we take those up to check some is two again one plus one is two so one on the table and two you go it's the ace as always place it on there and now what you got is you got a nine on top you got eight cards random and an ace it's just what you got now i like to have a spectator now force the card that is completely random i believe in the in the in the book it's just at this point they say just the next card it's because it's already so random from a magician from a spectator's uh, from the spectator's reference point right they because they just made up random numbers in their mind they just picked up random numbers and i'm doing this ritual but it's all based on their numbers however you could have the idea you could say yeah but this check sums you know maybe there's a mathematical principle behind it and that is why we do it now like this we now force you know we force we use the lift shuffle to force this package creates this creates this is now not any number this is just a number we define this number we say that whatever number you stop me at this is the card i'm taking out right so it's the nine now i'm going one two three four five six seven eight nine i have the card and i say this is curious because you stopped me at a random position right look where you stopped me at nine show me your cards everybody bang and now what they might have already thought in their little tiny brainy heads like oh, there are some magical print there's some mathematical principle now this is before they really before they even think it it's going to be shattered in their heads their little minds they're going to be crunchy 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 because how the fuck is this possible and then people I, I, there's just distortion in the head they have no freaking clue how this is they don't know how it's possible and the reactions are strong and i like to play this in a in, in a big group i really like to involve the whole group also when you have now a few performance tips when you have um of course they're not supposed to show the card just to keep, keep it secret you know don't don't have them so so you can play this game so you involve the three people who have the card they made a mystical decision the number and they get this ace and they know only from there from their side they got the ace and they go like oh got the ace that's crazy so so you play with them now you know you, you give them like uh, informal signal so you don't don't uh i'm sorry i'm going the wrong camera here don't uh informal signal like little, little little something like this when you get the card you know they get the card and what's going on in their brain is like oh shit, i got the ace and 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 what i'm going then is like yeah um if you want right and then they go like oh yeah, yeah. so they're intrigued now they're part of the mystery you know they have something to hide they're and they're excited you know their little hearts beat it's goes on it's really nice and they have this little people say um oh can i see your card and no 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 this is happening and you have to encourage this encourage something like this so people are playing it's playful everybody gets involved and then at the point where everybody is emotionally in involved you, you, it, it, this, it, this becomes the, this is where it becomes entertaining this is where it becomes fun for everybody and it's not just some random douchebag you know trying to be trying to be the smartest kid in the room or trying to be cool or, or, or whatever your motivation your false motivation might be right um, because there's only one le legitimate reason there's only one 
true meaning for doing all this. And that is entertaining your audience. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. The music has been super loud all the time. I did. I just realized it. I, is, is anybody, are you still with me? I, did I lose everybody? No, uh, currently eight, eight people, 18 people watching. Okay, hit the keys. Hit the keys. What do you say? Do you like this trick? Do you know this trick? What are you doing? What's up? Oh, now I'm paranoid that the music was so loud that nobody heard all the god candy I just, I just all the wisdom I just shared. All right, Glenn Andrews, very nice. All right. This was a very stressy, a very stressy tune. That was a very stressy tune. All right. All right. So let me very shortly show you. This is the tutorial on the um, lift force, lift shuffle force which is in a way I perform the Oblivion Aces kind of uh, relevant. Uh, it's the in-depth tutorial um, where I show you this with the, with the red B on a blue B stock. Um, and uh, you guys gonna have a um, blast of time learning this technique. And it's very useful and it's, it's one of the center moves you, I, I recommend every novice of the art form really mastering. It is so rich, it's so powerful. It is just a, a weapon of mass destruction. Um, so if you if you need to learn this, if you need some subtleties on the move, this in-depth tutorial you will find in the info uh, cards, right? And if you are looking for other things to come, because now we are moving towards we are moving towards um, um, double lift and double turn. So next week it's going to be false shuffles and cuts. Very nice. Um, also some very n fine tricks. And then we go into double lift and double turn over. Yes, baby. I've got a whole tutorial series up and running on this uh, suckers too. Um, the, the, the best uh, beginner double lift, double turn over. The best working double lift, double turn over. Strike double lift, double lift, turn over. And a fancy double lift, double turn over. Everything you need, basically. Then we go to the pass. I talked a little bit about the pass. I have an in-depth tutorial series on the pass up and running on my channel. Flourishes, reverses, Hindu shuffle. We're going back to shuffling here, you know? They are serious about it. Um, then comes the classic force, which is the classic force. And, <coughs> and we're gonna talk about forcing at this point. Top and bottom changes. And then we're talking about arrangements of tricks in general, then about routining, and then we are pretty much done because there's one more part and part three, the last chapter, that's platform tricks. And the, the journey here that it describes from mastering single tricks um, without any, knowing anything about it, becoming so understanding of the art form that we kind of um, now are working with the core structures of trick designs, of routines, being enabled to choose different means to different ends. And then we move from a very small, selfish, to a bigger situation, to a close-up situation, to a parlor situation. And then we enter the big stages. We're going on the platform. We're going on the stage now with this. And of course, <clears throat> There's a transformation. There, ha this something. There's something happening, um, and um, and it's very reasonable that this book ends here, basically just giving an, a hint, side, giving a direction where you might want to go or not go. Because cards on a big stage, stage illusions with cards, something very different than the intimate one-on-one -on -one in a close-up or um, in a parlor situation. Obviously, right? Obviously. Very, very beautiful. All the material for the upcoming sessions are to be found 
um, on my channel. And um, I've got it quite organized here with um, tutorial series, all them moves, all them tutorials up and running, absolute beginner tutorial series, no limits of control, all the other tutorial series and some, some extra candy, a little bit with coins. By the way, um, why not looking in, in a little bit in, uh, in Bobo, like to scratch the surface of Bobo's modern coin magic, some uh, basic routines just to pimp up our ride with cards as we proceed um, walking through the uh, Royal Road, to, uh, as we proceed um, on our journey on the Royal Road to card magic. Why not um, uh, taking a look um, into the future, um, introducing expert at a card table from Earth Nays. <laughs> and also taking a look at the expert at, at expert card technique and then maybe kind of setting out a um, uh, um, a travel route through these amazing books. Um, I would be really interested in this. If you guys are interested in that too, just let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Uh, let me know wherever you want to hook me up on um, Twitter or on Patreon or newer days on Discord. By the way, our Discord server, you find it uh, where you find it. This is uh, uh, here is the Discord server. This is of my community tab on my channel page. Um, there is the invitation to the Discord server. If you wanna, if you wanna hang out and chat a little more after this live session here, um, if you um, just, you know, um, I'm, I'm there occasionally, I'm not there all the time, but uh, somebody eventually might be there and then you get to know each other better, right? So, um, I, don't, I don't get it. There's no music playing here uh, once again, which is just, I want you. Are we gonna play this? What is this? Dubstep, let's, l let's listen to dubstep. So, and at this point, uh, I also, of course, want to thank all my patrons, for all you odd maniacs, what it is since today, for your incredible support. We are now with 10 um, patrons, with 10 odd maniacs, bringing together 36 rock, rocks, which is amazing. Um, I'm going to add a couple of new uh, tiers. Uh, but you don't worry about skipping tiers or something because the first uh, introduction videos of, of all tiers are going to be available for all patrons of all tiers um, as I'm working myself more into Patreon. We also got here a poll about the community name and also here at Maniacs uh, was uh, uh, first to go. So you can also contact me via Patreon. I read all your comments, by the way, on every YouTube video. I, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hooking, hooking up on uh, Patreon also. I will regularly, uh, re on a regular basis, session with three of my patrons here on Patreon, and I will talk about any topics you choose. The participants will be drawn by lot from all patrons of, uh, of every tiers at the time being. I do know how I will do this then, but I guess we'll find uh, a way to make this exciting, hopefully soon, right? Very easy, and this is going to, prob going to be probably a um, unlisted, unlisted uh, live stream um with only three of you guys and also maybe i will uh do this um interactive really we we, we we're gonna maybe work this out on a google hangout so that you that you just can really follow along with the cards and really ask me ask me verbally which would mean that at this point when we make a uh, hundred rucks a month uh, Art marius magic starts uh teaching Art marius that's me that's me starts teaching um in a, in a live chat um, video chat for the very first time, and so you're you're the, you're going to be the my um, these three lucky winners. You're going to be my uh, uh, lab, lab, lab rats, you know, <laughs> uh, which is super cool. Um, I'm super excited to do this, but um, we, we don't have to rush in here. Uh, uh, we we have all of our time, all the time in the world, um, and I'm super excited. Um, to this with you guys. We got uh, we got a bad stream quality. How can this possibly be? Um, and we got 16 folks currently watching. By the way, I'm using here the Brave browser, which is an epic browser. You will find a download link in the, in the info box. It's kind of the first link next to the Patreon link. 
this browser comes with an inbuilt ad blocker. It comes with an inbuilt firewall that, that blocks all spyware, um, tracking bots, etc. It loads absolutely fast. It's a very nice browsing experience. And it also comes with an inbuilt payment system, uh, a crypto wallet, which I already really use. I, al I already receive money and also send money to my favorite content creators, automized here. And whenever I come across a content creator I love and I watch a lot and they are not verified, I tell them, you gotta go there. This is a crazy system. It really helps a lot, especially in times of YouTube being conquered by mainstream media, by Hollywood stars and late night jimmies and where there's a lot of copy fraud happening, a lot of abuse of the copy ID system um, and also demonetization for whatever reasons. Yes, this is a system. This is the answer to the problem of all them content creators ever. Yes, it is a um, direct attack towards Google's business model or Facebook's business model or all the Silicon Valley giant business model of collecting data. The browser is rocking awesome. I like it. You don't have to use the crypto wallet. You don't have to um, use anything else there. Um, but of course, um, <clears throat> um, you can give it a try. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm, I'm using this browser for uh, for over a year now, and I would. I, it was the best, one of the best things I, I, I did. One of the best co consumer decisions I did. Right, righty, 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 right, 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 right. Um, and of course, we have been listening to the Royal Fe Royal Royalty Free Planet. Absolutely amazing um, YouTube channel that um, hooks us up with absolutely beautiful um, music. We are, we are listening right now to this track. To here we are here. Um, anyways, they they have a, they they are just fantastic. I love the stuff they do. Yeah. So what's going on in Discord? Probably nothing. Oh yes, a lot of what? Oh no 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 no. That's just me. that's just me. Right. Good. So, um, looking forward to meeting you guys on Discord. Um, looking forward. Doing my new tutorial series. So there's going to be every second day, at least every second day, a fast-paced tutorial. I try to bring up at least once a month, not two a month, a dedicated video, a longer tutorial or performance video, and I have at least one live stream session. Here we keep on walking through the road to card magic every Tuesday. Um, standard uh, uh, G GMT plus one Berlin Standard Time, uh, which is great. I want you. I want you there, right? And uh, that, that is how I roll um, uh, for the summertime. Really, really exciting. Really, really cool. And then I'm really looking forward. I don't know, Richard is, uh, is probably not with us here right now, but I'm really looking forward to collaboration with, with Richard Bella. So I'm getting ready to, to, to we're gonna use the Google, I, I guess I'm gonna use Google um, Hangout or something. I just need a video chat platform, which is super easy. Well, my vision is to have a, a video chat which goes and then um, both of uh, the um, participants or at least me is uh, streaming the chat. I would love to talk about uh, a, a lot, a many things uh, about Richard with Richard Bellas. I have a lot of questions for the man and uh, I think this would be a super awesome collaboration if he wants to. So I'm just teasing this also for myself because you know guys, this, it's, sometimes it's you know I have a great idea but um, uh, everybody's super busy and there's a technical issues and then something happens you know so um uh, don't freak out if, it, if it's never happening but we, we, we at least uh, 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 the division has been there at least for once you never know life is crazy life is crazy thank you so much guys i had a blast of a time we have it we, we are now at one hour and 45 minutes this is um a little bit longer than i actually planned to do it but what can you do it was an extremely productive time for myself. I really enjoyed um, uh, uh, performing this trick, sharing with you why I love the Oblivion Aces so much. I had a fun time to learn this production, this uh, uh, jog frog or what it's called. And also um, uh, when I went a little preachy, I hope I, I, I didn't overdose it. It's just, it's just, I'm so passionate about magic and I'm, I'm happy about everybody who tunes in and who is also passionate about this art form. And I know about these dangers, about, you know, dropping off, doing this crucial mistake of, you know, doing 
going into one sl too difficult slide after another instead of you know taking something powerful like the overhand shuffle and killing it killing it in the first two years two years overhand shuffle and you're done L you got a pink you know how to catch a pinky break you know how to control a pinky break and uh with a few cutting techniques and 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 you and you got it and then you go out there and you practice these tricks and everything's everything's good and you become a decent performer like but for example, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Lock, Ricky Lock. I don't know this guy. I haven't seen him here on my channel too much. I don't. He's not online so much. Just a little bit on Twitter. It was the first collaboration. You can say he had a YouTube channel on my. He, he commented on my early videos. So the first YouTube videos I brought up, and um, I gave him a shout out. He gave me a shout out too. So it was my first attempts, you know, on uh, in social media, uh, um, uh, with a relatively younger guy, and he walked a different path um, than me. I'm, you know, pr bringing my focus only on cards, um, mastering the art, and also becoming kind of, you know, um, uh, um, um, organizing my um, my my workload and my my my, my process, my learning process in a didactic manner, kind of. Um, he went out and he became an actual, actually a performer. And, and, and when he's tw uh, now twittering stuff, it is like, like, oh, I had a great time, great, great magic on this uh, um, uh, marriage or um, uh, great ma magic on this event. I had a blast of a time performing for, uh, for these people in this corporate co context and so on and so on. It's like, good for, this, good, good for this guy. He's like, I don't know how old he is now, but he's out there performing magic. Right, and this is uh, the, you can you can do it, you know. Um, yes, f uh, flying we to bed. I missed this one, but uh, took my mom out for dinner. Well, hey man, it's very nice uh, um, having good, staying good relationships with with your loved ones, with your family. Taking your mom out for dinner, man, th th what this the session is not worth missing that, right? Because you can rewatch it any time. And next week we're gonna be live again. And since we are here all in. Uh, um, in uh in uh like how, how you say this um in the uh, primary colloquium you know this is uh i'm going to repeat myself very often i'm going to say the same shit over and over again because i know you're not going to listen to it for the longest time and only a few of you are actually going to put it into into action because people are like that okay you know no everybody knows better everybody knows better honey better strength and condition yeah that's true Yes, watch all the series. Yes, uh, take your time. Maybe just featuring the book one more time. It is really super important to read also, because that's the first. That's how you your your neurons, they become creative and and, and this is inspiring. To how to imagine imagining what what it is you have to do with your fingers. Imagining how spectators would experience this. This is key. You know. This is just very important. So I highly recommend you guys, if you don't have it, get this book. And um, you might want to use one of the links in the info box, you know. And if you get this book, maybe you lay, your, uh, you lay yourself hands on a nice deck of playing cards, or a couple of them. Buy a brick, uh, you get 12 cheaper, right? <laughs> and I highly recommend this one. I got this one from Flying V. Flying V, oh, you, you haven't heard this. I just said it a couple of t times today. These cards are really nice. I like these cards. They just... They just gave me a good time, a good vibration. Um, it was so f much fun um, working with these suckers. Honestly, absolutely beautiful deck of cards. For uh, um, now, my hands are sweaty and everything's sweaty. Probably if I turn this off here, because usually now after a session like this, I would um, go into a two-hour practice session. I don't do this here due to. Um, technical issues but probably i'm going to um practice a little bit um, for myself um also without speaking these cards are just f are just fantastic um i'm having a great time thank you so much flying we for sending those to me tell your friend from katamundi they are um they are selling beautiful playing cards and um you it, are they are telling to tell katamundi these cards are what Marius approved <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I would, uh, if I would, um, uh, if I would um, produce a deck of cards, I would really give it a thought to to uh, to print it on on this kind of stock. If they do it, uh, if they do it, um, because maybe they they want to keep this exclusively for these cards. Um, very nice.
So what are we? Scott, uh, flying wheel route a session later. Any better thing? Can I, uh, yes, watch all the series. Any plans for gimmick reviews? Uh, no, no, not really. Um, nice, but oh, come on out, Mary. Sometimes practicing a slide just for fun cannot uh, be a bad habit. No, I, I haven't said this. Absolutely not. And you should also tackle different things. You should also um, tackle things and give it a try what you, where, where, you, where you know you're maybe not going to use it. Um, like just what I did here with this, with this co frog thing, you know? Um, no, don't get me wrong. Absolutely fair enough. And you should also, you sh yeah, you know, and you do, you're not doing something wrong if you, are, um, if you start practicing the pass, um, if you start practicing the... Um, What do you say? The diagonal palm shift or palming. So in general, advanced techniques while you're still at it at the base base chord. Just don't forget the base. Just don't forget to lay the 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 the, the foundation. You know? That's 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 what I'm that's all I want to say. And it's easy to forget about it. Because you say, nah, over and shuffle, that's lame, you know. I want to spend all my time on the pass or sp spend all my time on the, on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on whatever, right? So, but yeah, God, we got it. They go back. They go back to the shuffling. To the, they go back to the, to the over and shuffle. They go back to the Hindu shuffle. They always come back to this. And they lay, layer on layer on the, onto this foundation. And that's why they say at the beginning in the book, guys, please follow us. We know what we're doing. Just follow our instructions. And people go like, nah. I know it better. And there you have, you have all these people. These, um, this is how Erdnes put, put, puts it. These obno obnoxious individuals who, knows, who always know better how this one or another slide has to be performed. But they have never, never done anything. Right? Because man, performing magic is terrifying. <laughs> You're going to burn your hands. You're going to burn your soul. You're going to burn your brain. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I love these cards. Yeah, I'm going to in, into a little practice routine. But for now, for tonight, I, th I think we're done. We're good, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, everybody. Currently 50 folks viewing everything. Furthermore, check out all the other sessions in the info card. Check the info box for all the further links. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my little tiny universe. My name is Marriott, and this is just what I do. We are right now here invested in learning card magic, in becoming the best magicians only we can become. Yeah, right? If you're interested, if you really want to become a magician and if you want to become the best magician only you can become, very welcome. Very, you are very warmly welcome. For now, that's it for me. Next live session coming Tuesday. Um, uh, brace yourselves for um, a higher upload frequency of these um, fast-paced tutorials highlighting the keynotes of the move. Right, Peter Lizorski asked um, for upcoming tutorial series. Yes, first of all, I'm doing this, this uh, fast-paced tutorial series um, highlighting the keynotes on the move just to get the upload frequency high. This uh, can be beneficial for everybody because it's always good look kind of, you know, to, 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 to uh, uh, become aware again or to, to make yourself aware about what, are the, what is the, the keynotes here, like the, the, the important points. Uh, but also I'm kind of, you know, having my, um, my issues with the, um, with the AI. So I'm trying to, to hack the system here a little bit and trigger, trigger the algorithm basically. And then, of course, um, um, there will be um, uh, the tutorial series on table work. I will give you a tutorial series on table work very, very, very soon. I promise you that it should have been shot and done already. But yeah, this is here is developing kind of in a different way. It doesn't matter. It's going to come. Table work, in-depth um, table work, fast-paced tutorials, some uh, in-depth tutorials on, on, on just one or another move. I just uh, maybe spontaneously think about what, why not share this now. And then, of course, some great performances. I, I want to actually kind of do a series of uh, tutorial series at one point of my favorite uh, card tricks um, as performance. It's going to be like performance and tutorial on the other side so that um, 
um, also um, you guys uh, get to see me perform a little bit, bit, bit more because uh, I can do that, right? You know, <laughs> um, although performing for a camera and in a set like this is something very different. Always feels very different to 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 do to do this uh, with the real interaction, and I feel much more comfortable with having people like in a, in a in a live situation. This is so much more fun than when you just sit at home, and then I become like kind of this this perfectionist, and then I try to make no mistake at all, and um, to make it the best shot ever. And this is not my strength. You know, my strength is to be messy. My strength is to be chaotic and anarchistic and and confused and. Uh, um, don't get me wrong. I know my I know my skill. I'm, I know my 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 uh, my moves. You know, I'm a slight of fan. But th but my character is like, and this is my strength. I like to interact and uh, play and uh, play f play games with people, and 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 I don't have when the camera is like mm. camera is like just looking at it. Mm. What are you doing there? And then you go like, oh, now I do this trick, and the, and it's like, ah, fuck, I missed, the, I missed the, my, I missed the audience basically, right? Anyway, so I still will perform some some stuff for you in the future and some tutorials, tricks, and so, and that's that's what's coming up. I tried to do as much stuff to upload as much stuff as possible, but I'm 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 also a human being, at least I try to be. Right, so. Uh, Scott Clark gets the book when the stream ends and um, Glenn Andrews is now binge watching Otmarius. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all so much for tuning in. My name is Otmarius. This is what I do. You, whatever you do next, thank you so much. You are rocking awesome and you can rest assured more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. And now, uh, and now say goodbye and good night. Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe.